to show you guys the um, flood plugin from Flaming Pear. It's a free plugin that you can get right off their website. And I have my kids home, so it might be a little crazy, noisy in the background. So the first thing I do is I take my image that I want to add the flood effect to. And I've already edited out the mom holding the prop and the little sticks here that were holding the prop. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. So you can right click and hit duplicate. Um, but on the Mac, it's just Command J and, oop, and select it. Command J and it will duplicate the layer right for me. And so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the filter up here. I have already added the plugin in there, so it should be there. So I'm going to go all the way down and you'll see Flaming Pair and then Flood 2. So I'm going to click on that and then be patient while it loads up. And you can see it automatically pops up for me. And this you can just change the horizon to go less or more. Um, usually what I try to do is kind of keep it with the horizon of where my um, backdrop bends just to make it look natural. So I'm going to bring it all the way up until I get close to that. Still needs a touch more, so I'm going to go up a little bit higher. All right, that looks close enough. Okay, and so then you can also change um, the waviness, the complexity, all this different stuff. You can play around with those different things. There's also ways um, to change the way the waves are. Um, I haven't played around with that because you can get more rippled waves, more choppy waves, more circular waves, all these different things, but I haven't played around with that, so you're welcome to do it yourself. So I'm going to hit OK, and it'll hop up on the screen. And I'm doing it to my top layer here, so you can see this over here. And then we'll be patient as it loads up. I have another program running in the background, so it is being super slow because of that. All right, guys, it's taking forever. Normally, it doesn't take this long. Sorry about that. Okay, finally. All right, so there we go there. And so what I'm going to do now, as you can see, this is my top layer. When I click it off, that's the bottom layer. And there's the top layer. So I don't want it to cover so much of my moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to not show the top layer. I'm going to, oh wait, first, actually, first I'm going to create a mask. So I'm going to click on a mask. And now I'm going to not show the top layer. I'm going to go to my bottom layer. Make sure it's selected for your bottom layer. And then I have this magic wand tool selected because right now I just want to select the um, moon because I want a little bit of the moon still showing to make it look like the water is just sort of, you know, going a little bit on top. So all I do is I just start dragging it and it'll start selecting my things. Um, and then you hold down the shift key and it'll let you add more things onto it. And so I can add just little shoes. I don't think I'm going to really go this far, but I'm going to do it and then I'm going to add it back to wherever I want. All right. All right. And then um, I'm going to go back up. So that's pretty close to where I want selected. I might try to zoom in a little bit and see if I can get a little bit closer onto this string. This is going to be pretty close to the background, so it might end up messing up on me. Yep, and see this brown string is too close to the here, and now it starts selecting everything. So I'm going to hit Command Z and just get rid of that part. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up here, and I'm going to make my top one visible. And you can see where I've selected the bottom. And I'm going to hit my mask layer right here, and I'm going to go to my brush right here. You can see the brush tool. And make sure your white, your mask is white, so your brush needs to be the opposite. So I've got a black brush here, and I have a soft, big brush is what I usually use. You can see the size up here. And so I'm just going to start brushing it off. And you can, oops, sorry, my opacity is set too low. So here's my opacity. I'm going to go all the way up. I'm going to start brushing it back on. So obviously I missed his foot a little bit, which is not a big deal. 
all right? Um, and actually, I'm going to command see that because I don't want that. I actually want more of the top mm -hmm. to come off. I'm, I'm recording. Okay, so I'm just going to do this right here to show you guys how to do that. So it's just a little bit coming through. And then um, I just wanted those clean edges of the moon on the side here so I don't have to manually go through and like intricately brush them off. So I think that's going to what I'm going to want there. So now what I'm going to do is going to hit Command D, which is going to deselect what I have already selected. So I'm going to hit Command D. Or again, you could have gone up to uh, Select, and you would hit this one, Deselect. But I've already done it. But you can see it's also Command D. Okay. So I've obviously got to fix this part right here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to start brushing. And again, it's a white mask layer and a black brush. So I'm going to brush it off until I get to about where I want to go. Okay. So kind of get that angle there. And then obviously I got his foot and I don't want that. So I'm going to change my brush here. Or you can hit the X key and then you're going to go here and start getting it where you want. So you can kind of start seeing it there. And the bigger the brush, the softer the lines. Um, the only thing is when you start getting into this part, you kind of want them a little bit harsher to make it look like the um, the water is actually just crisping right up onto the moon. So I'm going to have back onto my black brush so I can get my moon in here. And I'm going to get more of a solid line here. And I'll probably go a little bit stronger on my brush as well. So I'm going to get even smaller. And uh, I use the, the bracketing keys on the left and the right. They create, your, um, they create your brush size to go smaller or larger. And I love um, using my keystrokes instead of having to go and manually keep going through menu items. So that's kind of, I'm not going to do a really like hardcore one, but it kind of gives you the idea. And you can go as low as you want. I think I went a little lower on my original one that I showed you guys. Um, and now you can see I'm kind of rubbing off right here. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to change it again over here. Or I, I'm just going to hit the X key and it changes it for me. And then I'm just kind of brush on again a little bit here to get more of a sharp line. So it looks like it's floating in the water a little bit better. And then I'm going to fix right here because it's overlapping again. So I'm going to switch my X key here to white so I can get back more. Oh, sorry, wrong one. X key here to get it back to black so I can get a little bit more of the moon again. And I went too far, so I'm going to fix it. And I could have just done coming in Z and fix it, but I'll just do this to show you guys. So it gives you a little idea of how it works. So you can do a lot more, a lot less, um, and keep changing the waves however you want to do it. And um, the other thing I also do is I think it looks a little silly to have a like dark line right here. So I will do a soft one. And usually what I'll do is um, lower the opacity of my brush. So I might lower it to like 50% and then keep going over it until I see where it looks pretty good to me. Um, so we're going to X this again. So X black brush now and to raise some of it so it starts to look more like it's natural here. And this is like super, super rough way to do it. You can do it, you know, a lot more intricate, but it just gives you an idea of how to get it done and make it look um, nice right there. So, um, just so you can see again, so the before and after, and you can just definitely, I know I did a little bit better on my other image, um, but I don't have it up right now to be able to show you. So, let me see if I can switch really quickly to show you that it's really quick. So, right here, slowness, as you can see, my personal page. So, again, here... Um, I did a different rep, a little bit more ripples, and then I just kind of did more of a straight line here that you can see there. Um, so I'm going to switch back. So then you can do, you can play around with it and get it however you want to go. And then what I would do once I'm like happy with my edit is then I would merge them. So um, for a Mac, that's Command Shift E, like elephant, or you can go up to Layers and you go down to um, Merge Visible. And so it'll merge all of your layers, and then I just hit Command S, and I save it back into Lightroom, and that's where I do all my final edits. So again, right here, I'll hit Command Shift E. You can see them merge into one, and then I'll hit Command S, and you'll see it start to save. 
and then it'll just save it right back into Lightroom. And then I will go in and do all my final touch-ups. And that's where I ended up making everything into um, the blue tones and all, all that. And then I did actually go ahead and um, get a brush off of the internet. Um, it was a free brush. Uh, and it said it, it could be used for personal or commercial. So make sure you look at that when you're looking at downloading brushes. Um, is that make sure you can use it for commercial use. And then I just applied those on the outside and adjusted the opacity until I got it where I wanted it to be. And then made sure that he was lit up the right tone. So I warmed him up a bit, even though I cooled down the rest of the image. So hopefully this guy helps you guys. If you have any questions, um, you're more than welcome to private message me and I can try to help you with anything else. I'm not a master at this, but I do love using this option. I've used it several times in my business. Um, I have another one I can show you real quick on my um, profile images. If I can show you that really quick, if I can find them. It might not be in here. It might be too hard to find. Um, but it's just another one. Oh, it might be here. Nope. Um, to go through my profile images because I used to use one on another one and it was actually a digital background. So that's kind of a nice option to um, see if I can find it. Sorry, my computer. Oh, this one. So this one I used, it was a digital backdrop, but then I added the flood effect, and I thought it was on my profile picture, but it wasn't. So this is a fun one to add a profile of a flood effect to. So anyways, um, if you have any questions, just let me know, and I will get back to you. And I hope you guys have a great day. So thanks a lot.